Hello, welcome to my channel. Are you ready to test your vocabulary and listening? What's your experience with hospitals, either as a patient or a visitor? My experience with hospitals has mostly been as a visitor, accompanying family members or friends who needed medical care. It can be a stressful environment, but I've always been grateful for the compassionate care provided by healthcare professionals and the support. How do you think hospitals contribute to community well-being? I believe hospitals play a vital role in community well-being by providing essential medical services, emergency care, and support for individuals and families facing health challenges. They serve as hubs for healing, prevention, and education. What's your opinion on the importance of hygiene in hospitals? I think hygiene is incredibly important in hospitals to prevent the spread of infections and ensure the safety of patients, staff, and visitors. Maintaining clean and sanitary environments, following proper hand hygiene protocols. How do you think hospitals have evolved over time in terms of technology and medical advancements? Hospitals have evolved significantly over time in terms of technology and medical advancements, leading to improved patient care, diagnosis, and treatment options. Innovations such as electronic health records, advanced imaging techniques. What's your perspective on the role of hospitals during public health crises, such as pandemics? I believe hospitals play a crucial role during public health crises, such as pandemics, by providing frontline care, containment efforts, and support for affected communities. They serve as critical hubs for testing, treatment. How do you think hospitals can improve patient experience and comfort during hospital stays? I think hospitals can improve patient experience and comfort during hospital stays by focusing on compassionate care, communication, and patient-centered practices. This includes enhancing amenities and accommodations, providing emotional support and information. What measures do you think hospitals should take to ensure patient safety? I believe hospitals should take several measures to ensure patient safety, including implementing strict infection control protocols, regularly sanitizing equipment and facilities, and promoting hand hygiene among staff and visitors. How do you think hospitals can better support the mental health needs of patients? I think hospitals can better support the mental health needs of patients by integrating mental health services into primary care settings, providing access to psychiatric consultations and counseling services, and offering resources for coping with stress, anxiety, and depression. What role do you think hospitals play in educating patients about their health conditions and treatment options? I believe hospitals play a crucial role in educating patients about their health conditions and treatment options by providing clear and accessible information involving patients in shared decision-making processes and offering resources for health literacy and self-management. How can hospitals improve accessibility and inclusivity for patients from diverse backgrounds? Hospitals can improve accessibility and inclusivity for patients from diverse backgrounds by addressing language barriers, cultural differences, and socioeconomic disparities in healthcare access. This includes providing interpretation services, offering culturally sensitive care. What measures should hospitals take to ensure a smooth transition of care for patients upon discharge? Hospitals should take several measures to ensure a smooth transition of care for patients upon discharge, including conducting comprehensive discharge planning, coordinating care with primary care providers and specialists, and providing patients with clear instructions and follow-up care plans. 
How do you think hospitals can foster a supportive environment for patients, families, and caregivers? I think hospitals can foster a supportive environment for patients, families, and caregivers by providing open communication, emotional support, and practical assistance throughout the care process. This includes involving families in care decisions, addressing their concerns and questions. What do you think are the main responsibilities of the police in a community? I believe the main responsibilities of the police in the community include maintaining public safety, enforcing laws, preventing crime, and providing assistance and support to residents in times of need. How do you think the police can build trust and positive relationships with the community? I think the police can build trust and positive relationships with the community by engaging in community-oriented policing initiatives, fostering transparency and accountability, and actively listening to the concerns and feedback of residents. What measures do you think the police should take to address issues of racial or social injustice? I believe the police should take several measures to address issues of racial or social injustice, including implementing anti-bias training for officers, promoting diversity and inclusion within police departments, and holding officers accountable for misconduct or discriminatory behavior. How can the police effectively respond to emergencies and crisis situations? The police can effectively respond to emergencies and crisis situations by maintaining a well-trained and equipped force, establishing clear protocols and procedures for emergency response, and coordinating closely with other emergency services and agencies. What role do you think community policing plays in crime prevention and public safety? I believe community policing plays a crucial role in crime prevention and public safety by fostering trust, collaboration, and partnership between police and community members. How do you think the police can address challenges such as gang violence or drug trafficking in communities? I think the police can address challenges such as gang violence or drug trafficking in communities by implementing a comprehensive, multifaceted approach that includes targeted enforcement, prevention, and intervention strategies. What steps do you think the police can take to improve relations with marginalized communities? I believe the police can take several steps to improve relations with marginalized communities, including actively listening to their concerns, engaging in dialogue and collaboration, and demonstrating empathy and understanding. In your opinion, what are some effective ways for the police to address crime prevention in neighborhoods? In my opinion, some effective ways for the police to address crime prevention in neighborhoods include implementing community policing strategies, establishing partnerships with residents and local organizations, and focusing on proactive measures such as crime analysis and problem solving. How can the police balance the need for public safety with protecting individual rights and civil liberties? I believe the police can balance the need for public safety with protecting individual rights and civil liberties by upholding the rule of law, adhering to constitutional principles, and exercising discretion and judgment with fairness and impartiality. What role do you think technology plays in modern policing, and how can it be used effectively? I think technology plays a crucial role in modern policing by enhancing operational efficiency, improving data analysis and intelligence gathering, and enhancing communication and coordination among law enforcement agencies. How do you think the police can address issues of mental health crisis intervention and support? I believe the police can address issues of mental health crisis intervention and support by collaborating with mental health professionals, establishing crisis intervention teams, 
and providing specialized training for officers in de-escalation techniques and mental health awareness. What steps can the police take to build trust and confidence among youth in the community? I believe the police can take several steps to build trust and confidence among youth in the community, including engaging in positive youth outreach and mentorship programs, providing educational opportunities and resources, and fostering open communication and dialogue. What do you think are some important issues facing women today? I believe some important issues facing women today include gender inequality, reproductive rights, equal pay, access to health care, and violence against women. Addressing these issues is crucial for promoting gender equity, empowering women, and ensuring. How can society promote gender equality and women's empowerment? Society can promote gender equality and women's empowerment by implementing policies and initiatives that address systemic barriers and discrimination, providing equal opportunities for education and employment, and challenging harmful gender stereotypes and norms. What role do you think education plays in advancing women's rights and opportunities? I believe education plays a crucial role in advancing women's rights and opportunities by providing them with knowledge, skills, and empowerment to pursue their goals and aspirations. How can workplaces support women's advancement and career development? Workplaces can support women's advancement and career development by implementing policies and practices that promote gender equity, such as pay transparency, flexible work arrangements, and parental leave policies. What are some challenges women face in accessing health care? And how can these challenges be addressed? Some challenges women face in accessing health care include lack of affordable health care services, limited access to reproductive health services, and gender bias in medical treatment. How can communities support survivors of gender-based violence and create safer environments for women? Communities can support survivors of gender-based violence by providing access to safe housing, counseling services, legal assistance, and advocacy support. What do you enjoy most about playing tennis? What I enjoy most about playing tennis is the combination of physical activity, strategy, and skill. It's a sport that challenges both my body and mind and there's a sense of satisfaction in executing a well-placed shot or winning a hard-fought point. How do you think tennis benefits physical fitness and overall health? I believe tennis offers numerous benefits for physical fitness and overall health, including improved cardiovascular endurance, muscle strength, agility, and flexibility. Playing tennis also promotes coordination, balance, and reflexes. What are some tips you would give to someone learning to play tennis for the first time? Some tips I would give to someone learning to play tennis for the first time are to focus on mastering the basic strokes, such as the forehand, backhand, and serve, before moving on to more advanced techniques. How do you think tennis fosters important life skills such as sportsmanship and resilience? I think tennis fosters important life skills such as sportsmanship and resilience by teaching players how to handle wins and losses with grace, respect their opponents, and persevere through challenges. What role do you think mental focus and strategy play in a successful tennis game? I believe mental focus and strategy play a crucial role in a successful tennis game. Maintaining concentration, staying calm under pressure, and adapting to changing circumstances are essential for making quick decisions and executing game plans effectively. How do you think tennis can be made more accessible to a wider range of people? 
I think tennis can be made more accessible to a wider range of people by reducing barriers to participation, such as cost, location, and equipment availability. Offering affordable lessons, clinics, and recreational programs, providing access to public courts and facilities. What are some common mistakes beginners make when learning to play tennis, and how can they avoid them? Some common mistakes beginners make when learning to play tennis include gripping the racket too tightly, using improper footwork, and focusing too much on power over control. How do you think playing doubles tennis differs from singles, and what skills are important for success in doubles? Playing doubles tennis differs from singles in terms of strategy, communication, and teamwork. In doubles, players must work together with their partner to cover the court effectively, communicate effectively, and anticipate each other's movements. What role do you think coaching and instruction play in improving tennis skills? I believe coaching and instruction play a significant role in improving tennis skills by providing players with personalized feedback, technical guidance, and strategic advice to help them develop their game. How do you think tennis tournaments contribute to the popularity and growth of the sport? I think tennis tournaments contribute to the popularity and growth of the sport by showcasing top-level competition, inspiring fans, and providing opportunities for players to compete on a global stage. What are some ways tennis players can stay motivated and overcome setbacks or slumps in their game? Some ways tennis players can stay motivated and overcome setbacks or slumps in their game include setting realistic goals, maintaining a positive mindset, and focusing on continuous improvement. It's important for players to recognize that setbacks are a natural part of the learning process. How do you think technology and innovations have impacted the game of tennis? I believe technology and innovations have had a significant impact on the game of tennis, from equipment advancements to data analytics and video analysis tools. Modern racket technologies have allowed players to generate more power and spin. What factors do you consider when choosing what clothes to wear for different occasions? When choosing what clothes to wear for different occasions, I consider factors such as the dress code, weather, comfort, and my personal style preferences. I also take into account the activities planned for the day and any specific requirements or expectations for the event. How do you think fashion trends influence the clothing choices people make? I think fashion trends influence clothing choices by shaping popular styles, colors, and silhouettes that are deemed fashionable at a given time. People often look to fashion trends for inspiration and guidance on what to wear. What role do you think clothing plays in expressing individuality and identity? I believe clothing plays a significant role in expressing individuality and identity by allowing people to showcase their personality, values, and cultural heritage through their personal style choices. How do you think the rise of sustainable fashion has impacted the clothing industry? I think the rise of sustainable fashion has had a transformative impact on the clothing industry, leading to increased awareness of environmental and social issues related to garment production and consumption. Sustainable fashion practices, such as using eco-friendly materials, reducing waste, what are some important considerations to keep in mind when shopping for ethically made clothing? Some important considerations to keep in mind when shopping for ethically made clothing include researching brands' commitment to sustainable and ethical practices, looking for certifications such as fair trade or organic certifications. How can people maintain and care for their clothes to prolong their lifespan? 
people can maintain and care for their clothes to prolong their lifespan by following care instructions on garment labels, washing clothes in cold water, using gentle detergents, and air drying garments whenever possible to reduce wear and tear. In what ways do you think cultural traditions influence clothing choices and styles? I believe cultural traditions influence clothing choices and styles by shaping aesthetic preferences, color palettes, and textile patterns that are reflective of specific cultural identities and heritage. Traditional garments often carry symbolic meanings and historical significance. How do you think social media platforms have impacted the way people perceive and engage with fashion? I think social media platforms have had a significant impact on the way people perceive and engage with fashion by democratizing access to style inspiration, enabling influencers and content creators to shape trends and influence consumer behavior. What are some key considerations for dressing appropriately in different professional settings? Some key considerations for dressing appropriately in different professional settings include understanding the dress code expectations of the workplace, dressing in a manner that reflects professionalism and respect for the environment. How do you think personal values and beliefs influence clothing choices? I believe personal values and beliefs influence clothing choices by guiding individuals' decisions about the brands they support, the materials they prefer, and the messages they want to convey through their clothing. For example, someone who values sustainability and ethical production. What role do you think fashion plays in shaping societal norms and perceptions of beauty. I think fashion plays a significant role in shaping societal norms and perceptions of beauty by promoting certain body ideals, aesthetic standards, and trends that influence how individuals perceive themselves and others. Fashion imagery and advertising often perpetuate narrow standards of beauty. How can individuals use fashion as a form of self-expression and empowerment? Individuals can use fashion as a form of self-expression and empowerment by embracing their personal style, experimenting with different looks, and wearing clothing that makes them feel confident and authentic. Fashion can be a powerful tool for self-expression. What are some common misconceptions about blood donation, and how can they be addressed? Some common misconceptions about blood donation include fears about pain or health risks, concerns about eligibility criteria, and myths about the blood donation process. These misconceptions can be addressed through education and awareness campaigns that provide accurate information. How do you think blood transfusions have impacted modern medicine? I think blood transfusions have had a profound impact on modern medicine by saving countless lives, supporting medical procedures and treatments, and improving patient outcomes. Blood transfusions are essential for treating patients with severe injuries, medical conditions, and surgical needs. What are some factors that can affect a person's eligibility to donate blood? Some factors that can affect a person's eligibility to donate blood include their overall health, medical history, recent travel to certain countries, and lifestyle habits such as drug use or risky sexual behavior. Additionally, certain medical conditions, medications. How can blood donation centers ensure the safety and quality of donated blood? Blood donation centers can ensure the safety and quality of donated blood through rigorous screening processes, testing for infectious diseases, and following strict protocols for blood collection, processing, and storage. What are some common reasons people choose to donate blood? Some common reasons people choose to donate blood include a desire to help others and save lives, 
personal connections to individuals in need of blood transfusions, and a sense of community responsibility and altruism. How do you think public awareness campaigns and advocacy efforts can encourage more people to donate blood? I think public awareness campaigns and advocacy efforts can encourage more people to donate blood by highlighting the critical need for blood donations, educating the public about the importance and impact of blood donation, and dispelling myths and misconceptions. What do you think are some important factors in creating a positive learning environment in schools? Some important factors in creating a positive learning environment in schools include supportive teachers and staff, engaging in relevant curriculum, opportunities for student collaboration and participation, a safe and inclusive school culture, and access to resources and support services. How do you think technology can enhance education in schools? I think technology can enhance education in schools by providing access to diverse learning resources, facilitating personalized learning experiences, and fostering collaboration and communication among students and teachers. What role do extracurricular activities play? play in a student's overall educational experience. Extracurricular activities play an important role in a student's overall educational experience by providing opportunities for personal growth, skill development, and social interaction outside of the classroom. How can schools support the mental health and well-being of students? Schools can support the mental health and well-being of students by promoting a positive school climate, providing access to counseling and mental health services, and implementing social-emotional learning programs. What are some effective strategies for addressing bullying and creating a safe school environment? Some effective strategies for addressing bullying and creating a safe school environment include implementing clear anti-bullying policies and procedures, educating students and staff about bullying prevention and intervention, and fostering a culture of respect, empathy, and inclusion. How can schools promote diversity, equity, and inclusion among students and staff? Schools can promote diversity, equity, and inclusion among students and staff by embracing multicultural education, celebrating diversity through curriculum and school-wide events, and providing professional development and training on cultural competency and anti-bias education. What are some effective ways for schools to support students with diverse learning needs? Some effective ways for schools to support students with diverse learning needs include implementing individualized education plans EAPS or 500 for plans, providing accommodations and modifications, offering specialized instruction and support services, and fostering a supportive and inclusive learning. How do you think parental involvement contributes to student success in school? I think parental involvement plays a crucial role in student success in school by fostering a positive home-school connection, supporting academic achievement, and promoting social-emotional development. What role do you think standardized testing plays in measuring student achievement and school performance? I think standardized testing plays a role in measuring student achievement and school performance by providing data on academic proficiency, identifying areas of strengths and improvement, and informing educational policy and decision-making. However, how can schools promote a positive school culture and sense of community among students and staff? Schools can promote a positive school culture and sense of community among students and staff by fostering a culture of respect, collaboration, and inclusivity, promoting school-wide values and traditions, and providing opportunities for meaningful engagement and participation. Building Strong Relot What are some effective strategies for preventing and addressing student absenteeism 
and truancy. Some effective strategies for preventing and addressing student absenteeism and truancy include implementing attendance monitoring systems, establishing clear attendance policies and procedures, providing support services for students and families. How do you think schools can prepare students for success in higher education and the workforce? I think schools can prepare students for success in higher education and the workforce by providing rigorous academic coursework, career and college readiness programs, and experiential learning opportunities that develop critical thinking skills, problem-solving abilities. What role do you think effort and dedication play in achieving success, both academically and in other areas of life? I believe effort and dedication play a fundamental role in achieving success, whether academically, professionally, or personally. By committing to continuous improvement, setting goals, and persevering through challenges, individuals can overcome obstacles, reach their full potential. How can individuals cultivate a mindset of perseverance and dedication in pursuing their goals? Individuals can cultivate a mindset of perseverance and dedication by setting clear and achievable goals, breaking them down into manageable steps, and staying focused on their objectives despite setbacks or obstacles. What are some strategies for staying motivated and maintaining dedication? especially when faced with adversity or setbacks. Some strategies for staying motivated and maintaining dedication include finding inspiration from role models or mentors, visualizing success, and reminding oneself of the reasons why their goals are important. How do you think dedication to personal growth and self-improvement contributes to overall well-being and fulfillment? I believe dedication to personal growth and self-improvement contributes to overall well-being and fulfillment by fostering a sense of purpose, accomplishment, and self-fulfillment. What are some examples of how dedication and hard work have led to success in various fields or endeavors? Some examples of how dedication and hard work have led to success in various fields or endeavors include athletes who train tirelessly to achieve their athletic goals, entrepreneurs who persist through failures to build successful businesses. How can educators and mentors encourage and support students in developing a strong work ethic and dedication to their studies? Educators and mentors can encourage and support students in developing a strong work ethic and dedication to their studies by providing meaningful feedback, setting high expectations, and fostering a supportive and challenging learning environment. What role do you think intrinsic motivation plays in sustaining effort? and dedication towards long-term goals. I believe intrinsic motivation plays a crucial role in sustaining effort and dedication towards long-term goals by fostering a deep sense of personal satisfaction, enjoyment, and fulfillment in the pursuit of one's passions and aspirations. How can individuals overcome feelings of doubt or discouragement and maintain their dedication towards their goals? Individuals can overcome feelings of doubt or discouragement and maintain their dedication towards their goals by cultivating self-awareness, practicing self-compassion, and reframing setbacks as opportunities for growth and learning. What are some ways parents and educators can instill a sense of responsibility and dedication in children from a young age? Parents and educators can instill a sense of responsibility and dedication in children from a young age by modeling positive behaviors, providing opportunities for autonomy and decision-making, and offering praise and encouragement for effort and persistence. How do you think setting ambitious yet achievable goals can impact an individual's level of dedication and motivation? 
I believe setting ambitious yet achievable goals can positively impact an individual's level of dedication and motivation by providing a clear sense of direction, purpose, and progress. What are some potential pitfalls of overcommitment and excessive dedication? And how can individuals avoid burnout? Some potential pitfalls of overcommitment and excessive dedication include neglecting self-care, sacrificing personal relationships, and experiencing burnout or mental exhaustion. How do you think the pursuit of excellence and continuous improvement can foster a sense of dedication and fulfillment in various aspects of life? I think the pursuit of excellence and continuous improvement can foster a sense of dedication and fulfillment in various aspects of life by encouraging individuals to strive for their personal best, embrace challenges, and pursue growth and mastery in their endeavors. What are some benefits of regular running for physical and mental health? Regular running offers numerous benefits for physical and mental health, including improved cardiovascular fitness, increased stamina, and enhanced mood and mental well-being. How can beginners start a running routine safely and effectively? Beginners can start a running routine safely and effectively by gradually increasing their mileage and intensity, starting with a combination of walking and jogging to build endurance and reduce the risk of injury. What are some common mistakes that novice runners make, and how can they be avoided? Some common mistakes that novice runners make include overtraining, ignoring proper form, and neglecting recovery and rest. To avoid these pitfalls, novice runners should prioritize gradual progression, focus on building a strong foundation of endurance and strength. How can runners stay motivated and overcome plateaus in their training? Runners can stay motivated and overcome plateaus in their training by setting new goals, varying their workouts, and seeking inspiration from fellow runners or supportive communities. What role do nutrition and hydration play in supporting a runner's performance and recovery? Nutrition and hydration play a crucial role in supporting a runner's performance and recovery by providing the fuel and nutrients needed for energy, muscle repair, and optimal recovery. How can runners prevent and manage common running-related injuries? Runners can prevent and manage common running-related injuries by incorporating strength and flexibility exercises into their routine to improve muscular balance, stability, and mobility.